Welcome back to another charge review. I have the Xstar Dragon VP4 Plus in for testing and review, and this was sent in via Xstar. So we're going to go over all of the box contents, everything that's included in as much detail as I can just to show you the product properly and what I think about it at the end. We have some interesting features with this. We can test the voltage, internal resistance. We also have a refresh function as well, and these are the batteries that it supports right down from the small lithiums up to the large 32650 and including the C and D size cells. On the back we've got some more features, we have a zero volt activation which revives batteries, we've got, um, also have a USB output on this as well so you can charge from that and use it as a power bank. So let's have a look at what you get included when you take it out of the box and this is the carry case, nice quality carry case, perhaps expected at the price point, this is right at the higher end of chargers. Nice, you've got handles on that so you can put all your stuff in there and carry it around with you. Now when you initially get this you would have the charger inside here, there's a protective layer on the front of that to provide a bit of uh, impact resistance for the charger. We also have some slots here in the elasticated section so you can put cells into it and take it around with you. So perhaps an opportunity to do some testing for vape shops or something like that. But anyway, it's a nice feature to have. You can carry seals with the charger as well so they don't just rattle around inside the case. And this is the supplied car adapter, 12 volts. That's usually an add-on item, but with this we get it included. And these are the probes. These have a spring-loaded mechanism on the top. They also have raised contact points as well, and they are gold-plated. I'll just give you a close-up shot showing you the contact points. You can see there's uneven edges on there to get the best possible connection with the battery. And on the other end, we have a USB plug plugged into the back of the charger. This is the supplied adapter, 12 volts, rated at 3 amps. It's a UK plug. Obviously, other versions are available. And a quick look at the manual. Xstar tend to be quite um, brief with their manuals, and this is no exception. It does cover the basics, perhaps would have liked a little bit more detail, particularly about um, battery testing, just a few hints and tips on that, but it does cover the essential functions. You've also got your specification listed out, and your activation function as well, which in itself is automatic on some chargers, you have to actually initiate that. And this is a screen grab that I've got off of the user manual as well, just to cover the other areas. So you can pause that and have a look through if you want to. I will be covering this in quite a bit of detail. So this is the charger size. As you can see, it's fairly large for a charger, particularly in terms of the width. And we're moving a bit closer on to look at the LCD display. You notice we have four LEDs below that, and that will give us an indication of the charge state. Slot length on this is a bit longer than normal, 73 millimeters, but it's not quite long enough for the protected 21700 or 2700 cells. So the unprotected ones will fit in. Now the charging speeds, you can use the two outer bays, you've got a choice of three, half an amp, one amp, two amps, and the inner bay is just one amp and half an amp. And looking at the sliders, quite a bit of spring resistance on this, so it's not likely to pop out at all the batteries. The build quality in this is excellent, it's the best charger that I've used in terms of the build. Um, but again, we're at the higher end of the price range, so that's something I'd probably expect. Plastic's very dense and heat resistant. Three buttons at the top simplifies the operation. On the back, we have the input for the probes, power supply, USB output, and this is a 3S power pack uh, charging output at 1 amp. I don't have one of those batteries to test. Uh, on the underside, we have the silicone pads. There's quite a few on this to prevent it from slipping around. You just zoom in, you'll see some more details, and there's ventilation slots under there quite a bit. There's no fan included in this, so there's also vent slots on the side of the charger as well. Obviously using a fairly large heat sink in there to dissipate the heat. Now next to the Nightcore SC4, which is a relatively new charger, you can see that the X-Star is quite a bit wider, almost an entire slot wider, but it's not quite as tall. There is some advantages to this, because with the Nightcore you can fit three uh, 26650 cells in, but on the XR, due to the extra width, you can fit four of those in. So, if you're a big user of bigger lithium cells or even the bigger, larger nickel hydride cells, you're probably going to find this quite useful. But it's also fine with the small cells too, which is smaller lithium, and the triple A's also fit in fine. Now, you notice that when you plug, when it's not plugged in rather, and you put the lithium cells in, the power bank function comes up. It gives you an indication with the bars flashing one to five of the power state. We'll get onto that a bit later on. Now, when you power it up, you'll see the display goes through its boot up mechanism, and you also have the LEDs 
flash with the three states. So now we're going to put a cell in and initially you get the percentage readout at the top. We're into the charge mode and the default charging speed on this charger is one amp. And that includes any cell that you put in, a smaller or a larger one. So that's just something to watch um, to make sure that you change the amperage if you need to for the charging. Some chargers do that via slot length or capacity, but this one doesn't. I've just put a second battery in the other slot and you'll see that the uh, display for that appears too. That's much lower charge on that battery. And when I put a third one in, it switches over channels two and three. So we don't have individual slot control. We'll have to do it in pairs, or if you've one battery in, you'd be able to change the current on that. Is that a problem? Not particularly for a lot of cases, but it's something which I might have um, modified for a future model, possibly. You also see that it doesn't matter how you mix and match the chemistry on these. You can use nickel metal hydride or lithium ions, no problems at all. Just make sure that you're using the correct charge current for the type of battery. Now the display turns off after about uh, dims rather after about a minute, and you can push in the center button to switch it off entirely. The display is still there. You can just about see the bars moving along. But we also have those LED indicators below, so be able to see what's going on with those, even with the display turned off. I was also able to use the charger to charger device via the USB output. You can see the uh, at the top there with the tester, um, even whilst charging four cells, but it's going to depend on the actual uh, charge rate of the device and the cells themselves. But that worked quite well, so as a pass through, even when charging, decent enough performance. Now I'm just going to put a larger 26650 cell in here, and you can see I can adjust the charging rate in three stages from half an amp up to two amps. So make sure you're using the outer base to get that highest output speed off of the charge. You see the second cell gone in and the percentage reading comes up. It's also counting the milliamp hours um, that it's putting into the cell. This is in the normal charging mode. Now if I put uh, additional cells in the middle base, these can charge up to one amp. I have high capacity AA, so that's an okay charge rate for them, but I can also adjust that down if I want and switch between the two of them by pressing the middle button to see what um, the display is. So you've always got the display information for two cells at the same time. It's possibly you could argue you could have all four, but then that would make it smaller. They've gone for a large, easy to read display. Now I'm going to change the current. You can see on the outer base, I can charge nickel metal hydride cells at two amps. Wouldn't want to with AA batteries, but I put some C size cells in. These are much higher capacity put them in the outer base and I'll be able to charge those at two amps. That's pretty useful because a lot of chargers won't let you charge uh, nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium larger cells uh, above an amp. So that's a nice feature. Going to the refresh, just push and hold the left button. Now there's a sort of soft start feature with this charger so it won't automatically very quickly change the mode. You'll see it's switching over a bit later on into the discharge. There's about seven or eight minutes delay on that. And they're discharging, they've turned to blue. And the actual discharge rate is going to vary on the um, charge rate that you use, but I'll get onto that a bit later on. I'm going to do a capacity test. So the refresh will pull the current out and then charge it fully. The test will charge the battery fully and then discharge it completely. And then it will give you both readings with the discharged rate as well as the charge rate. So that's quite a useful function to have. You also have a memory that's built inside the charger, so it will remember the last 64 test results and that remembers that even when you power it off. Doesn't seem particularly useful but if you do a lot of testing and you're pulling cells out it could be quite handy to actually go back and look at those results as long as you can actually remember what the results the batteries were for each cells. It's something that I'd find useful because I'm testing uh, batteries quite a lot. And you can also use the middle button to cycle between the different bays if you were charging more than two at the same time. It's perhaps not a must have for everybody, but it's an interesting thing that they've put in there. You can double press, it takes you back to the main charging screen. What I'm gonna do now is do a capacity test on some smaller cells. I've mixing in lithium ion and also nickel metal hydride. You'll see the different display come up showing that. And this is a discharge rate. If you're doing half an amp charging, they've discharged at 250 milliamps, one or two amp, it will discharge at half an amp. So it could take quite a while for really large capacity cells, but these are fairly small, so it's not going to take too long. And we can see the results come up on the screen, charge and then the discharge. 
then you can press the center button to switch between the other two channels and you'll be able to see the charge and discharge rate on those cells. So this is probably the most useful function of the charger. Now we're going to move on to the probes because this is another interesting idea that they've come up with. They're using probes because um, it will give more accurate readings. So just plug it into the USB port onto the right side of the power adapter and then touch the two contact points together and you'll get the display come up and then put them onto the battery and you get the voltage reading and then the internal resistance reading. It goes up to 150 milliamps and I'm just checking it against my own voltmeter which I know is accurate and the probes are providing an accurate measurement for voltage. This is also testing the termination, 1.51 volts, nickel metal hydride, low internal resistance at 31 milliohms and on the second any loop cell again just cross them again if you've changed the display and again 1.52 sometimes you go above the 1.5 volts with the nickel metal hydride to get the full charge into the cell that's quite normal but lithium should terminate at 4.2 and they are pretty much exactly 4.19 4.2 and a low internal resistance reading on this again just testing another cell here don't have to be fully charged to do this and you can use it whilst you are testing um, charging cells you can actually test cells as well what you can't do though is charge and discharge at the same time you can't do that on this charger and this doesn't have a built-in fan this has a large heat sink to dissipate the heat so that may or may not be an issue just remember that if you are doing a test it might be out of action for a while the soft start slow charging you can see with these cells i've set them to two amps this uh, delay of about seven or eight minutes and then it moves up to the top rate of charging you'll see the milliamp hours increase into the batteries quite quickly now i personally would have liked a voltage display on this on the screen but the percentage display is quite accurate it gives you a very good idea of the uh, charge condition of the cells and there's no issues at all with heat on this even at rapid charge rates it gets slightly warm um, the charging unit and the cells just slightly warm I didn't see anything to concern me with the heat trying out the uh, usb power bank function and that worked quite well i can get fairly decent speeds on that or you can use it with um, charging at the same time so that's also an option i'm glad they included that because you might need to do that now if i compare it to the opus and um, the battery activation feature is something that the opus doesn't have that is probably it's one of its main disadvantages so i'll demonstrate now with a cell i put this into the opus what i'm going to do now is zoom in a bit so you'll be able to see the display a bit easier i've dimmed the lights down to make the displays easier to see and you'll see there's a null reading now a lot of smart chargers don't have an activation feature so if the battery voltage is below a certain threshold it could be 0.8 of a volt or half a volt or just under a volt it won't do anything and in this case with the opus because it's not getting a voltage reading it doesn't think there's a battery in the charger so it won't do anything i can't even do a quick test i can't discharge the cell so unless i use a different charger or a manual charger then i can't actually do anything with that battery on that particular charger i do like the opus it is a good budget charger but that is a limitation so i'm going to test it now on the dragon and you'll be able to see zero voltage there's no voltage at all in that battery that's because it's been in a device for about a couple of years i think it was left in something and it completely discharged and I mean, it's chance are that the battery is not going to perform very well but this will show you that i will be able to activate it on the dragon and most of the xstar in fact all of the xstar chargers i've used have the activation feature automatically puts a very low current into the battery you can see here it's starting to charge normally although the percentage display is quite high it's moving up quite quickly so what i'm going to do with this is take a quick voltage reading so the battery is charging but i'm suspicious that there's something else wrong with it you can see it's already up to 1.4 volts which it shouldn't be um, for that length of time that it's been charging so i put it back in the opus and you can see that it's now able to charge the cell that's because it's reached the voltage threshold it's gone over that so it knows that there's a cell put it back into the dragon you can see already i'm back up to 83 percent after about another five minutes so i did a capacity test on this cell and you can see here that the cell is very low in capacity this means it's basically of no real use but the activation function is pretty handy otherwise i wouldn't be able to test the battery so that's definitely a significant advantage with a charger like the dragon although there are other ones that xstar make that have that 
Another issue I sometimes had on the Opus is with some of the larger cells, it wouldn't quite contact the points as well, as, and you'd have to jiggle them around. And on the EBAC battery here, you'll be able to see that no matter what I do, I can't actually get that to charge unless I use a magnetic spacer. It's because it's got a very thick wrap and a flat top cell. So that's a minor point that I had with the Opus. It was a slight annoyance at times. I do like the Opus a lot, but that is a sort of a grumble with it. No problems on the Dragon. The contact points are better quality on that. Something they need to look at. That was just a quick demonstration on the buzzer that's built in. You can turn that on or off, but I find it quite useful. It's not too annoying, unlike the Fox Novo, which would sort of uh, beep the house down. So useful that you can have that, but also useful that you can turn it off. So it's time to think about a few areas on the X-Star Dragon, areas that I would change and improve. I would definitely adjust a few things on this charger. It's a premium price, so obviously you can be a bit nitpicky with these things. Would have added a 250 milliamp and 1.5 amp charging speed, possibly a voltage display individual charging per channel would be nice though it's not as huge an issue as it might seem also adjust the slot length for the uh, larger 2700 and 21700 protected cells they're becoming more popular um, there's a few other areas such as the additional voltages for the other lithium batteries like the lithium ion phosphate um, and a couple of small points like the USB output and again this is a pricey charger so obviously I'm going to be looking for areas to improve but there are obviously quite a few areas that I do like as well and they include good quality overall build is excellent the best I've seen in a charge you also get a very good package with this including the car charger and the probes and the carry case display is very large and easy to use it's a very simple charger to use and I think that is a good thing some of these chargers can be a bit finicky and it's also got good charging speeds and those testing functions are also going to be quite useful particularly if you are someone who has a lot of batteries this is really for someone who wants and needs to test batteries there are some good quality chargers out there that just do that charge so if you're someone that's going to make use of these functions um, quite extensively then yes this probably would be worth considering because you'll be able to weed out bad batteries and I myself I probably have a couple hundred cells at least around the house if you include the nickel metal hydride and lithium cells so for someone like me who is testing stuff this would be a very useful one and I've been using it as my main tester now for about three weeks just to give you some feedback on that. So hopefully you'll find this of some use. If you have any questions or any comments at all on the Dragon, just drop me a comment below and I'll get back to you with some more information. And also let me know what you think. What's your opinion on this? Are there anything else that you would like to see included? So thanks for watching the video and I will catch up with you very soon in my next video review.